I was the biggest Trump supporter there was. If he were to have said something, and if he were to just say Q's illegitimate, nothing's real in there, I think some people would leave. Welcome to Paul's Coffee Club. I am, of course, Paul Chapel, and welcome to another segment about QAnon. Yes, I said I wasn't going to do QAnon anymore or political stuff for that matter, but this stuff is so fascinating to me. It's just the mechanics of what it takes to put people in a cult and get them to believe in conspiracy theories is what drives my interest in this. So let's dive right in. This particular video I saw on CNN, it struck home for me just because this woman is from South Carolina. In fact, you'll see her on Myrtle Beach. I've been to Myrtle Beach so many times, I'll probably stay in the hotel that's in the background of the video. But let's just go ahead and play it, and then we can talk about it afterwards. When President Biden was sworn in. Hi, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. I was just crying. I mean, I couldn't stop like that ugly cry that you do. It just kept going, and I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm seeing the funeral of our country. And instantly I went into panic mode. I had to call my mom and I just told her, I was like, we're all gonna die. We're gonna be owned by China. And I was like, I might have to pull my daughter out of school because they're gonna take her. I was scared to death. Ashley Vanderbilt. <laughs> okay, I have to stop it. Okay, I understand part of the QAnon conspiracies is about pedophilia, but she specifically said she thought China was gonna take her children. Why would anybody in China want your kids? That doesn't make any sense. Nobody wants your kids, unless for sexual reasons, but you're saying China wants your kids. For what? They have enough kids in China, I'm pretty sure. I just, conspiracy. Some narcissism a little bit too that these people think anybody would want their kids. I don't want somebody else's kids. So what is the deal with, okay, let me, let me just shut up and play the rest. The South Carolina mom who says she lost her job early in the pandemic fell deep down the QAnon conspiracy theory rabbit hole before November's election. How did you get into this world and go down this rabbit hole? Well, I started seeing TikToks and I didn't know that it was conspiracy things. I just thought it was, they were telling me something that nobody else knew. <laughs> So then I would reach out to different friends of mine that were bigger Trump supporters. I would say, you know, I, I saw this on TikTok, what do you think? And they'd start sending me YouTube videos. They would start sending me different Facebook Live videos. And one thing led to another. I just went down this rabbit hole learning all this stuff. But I mean, what have we heard the last four or five years? Don't watch the news, fake news, fake news. I don't watch the news. I don't read newspapers. Like I don't do anything. I've always been someone that you just tell me what to do and I do it. I grew up being told we were Republicans. So I've always been that straight red ticket. How do you think that videos like this started showing up in your feed? Well, originally I was just following like entertainment stuff, but sometime when maybe people started like campaigning, I started liking a lot of Trump posts and things that were anti-Biden and the algorithm must have just brought that kind of stuff to me. You mentioned how important prayer is to you, how important God is to you. Do you think QAnon is becoming a religion for some people? I hope not. <laughs> I really hope not because people that are really Christians, they know that you can't put anyone above God. Even the groups that I was in, I was like, I'm going to these more than, you know, I go to church once a week. I'm up here for two hours every single night. Like, Let me just say something about this religious thing. That's very astute observation. QAnon uses a lot of religious type terminology. For instance, they say, trust the plan. Now, where have we heard that from? Where if you go to church, what's the answer for when the priest or reverend or whatever doesn't have an answer for something? They, they tell you, have faith. So always have faith. If you have doubts about something in the Bible, have faith. So that's QAnon just co-opting that religious mentality. They know conservative people are more likely than not to have that religious mentality and trust the plan is so much like faith with them. So you don't need evidence. Why would you need evidence? Just trust the plan. So I just want to bring that up. So a big component to 
a lot of Colts. Committed to these. And I was like, that's probably not right. And then I started thinking, am I putting even Trump above God? Trump can do no wrong. There's excuses for everything. Right before the inauguration, you didn't believe Biden was really gonna get sworn in. No, I expected a blackout. I expected the TV to go black and nothing to work, and so we wouldn't see anything. The assumption of what would happen would be that most of the Democratic leaders there, quite a few of the Republican leaders, all the Hollywood elite that had attended, they'd all be arrested. The military's gonna haul them off. They said that Trump opened back up Guantanamo Bay, and then the military would run the country put us in martial law because the left would come too unhinged and they'd be a danger to us. And then Trump would come back when the government was rebuilt. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> but you believed it. I did. And then Biden got sworn in. Mm -hmm. How did you feel? I was devastated. The belief among QAnon supporters that Biden would not be inaugurated was wrong. Ashley Vanderbilt realized she had bought into a conspiracy theory. Well, I was wrong. How do you feel now knowing that you believed all this stuff? It's weird. I think I spent a lot of time this year isolated from everybody. You know, I'd just been home a lot. I've lost my job last April in 2020 and I was super depressed. And I think in a way I'd probably lost touch with a little bit of reality and that almost like common sense. And so I'm not so much embarrassed for what I believed, but I mean, I feel foolish. I'm stressed out all the time. So my home life, like with my four-year-old, I feel like I definitely had a lot less patience with her. There would just be times where I would just snap. I would just get so upset with her. So I, I've had to apologize to her a lot for being like, I'm sorry for just even getting hateful towards you. Like I, it is not you, it is me. I got my own stuff going on. I mean, you must be happy that, for your daughter's sake, that you've been able to get out of this. Yeah, she needs her mom. <laughs> and I wasn't 100% there like I should have been. A spokesperson for TikTok said the company is committed to countering misinformation and content promoting QAnon is not allowed on its platform. After finding QAnon true TikTok, Ashley said the only thing that might have pulled her out of it before the inauguration was if Trump spoke out against it. I was the biggest Trump supporter there was. If he were to have said something, and if he were to just say Q's illegitimate, nothing's real in there, I think some people would leave. Maybe not all the people that are way too far into it, but I think it would help a lot of... It would have helped you? Mm -hmm. I thought the world of him, so if he would have said that's not real, I'm not coming back, it is over. I would have believed him. So I like that last point about Trump. Trump was never going to disavow QAnon, just how he never really disavowed, disavowed white supremacists, the very fine people comment. Uh, I think he came out and said that QAnon, well, I heard it was okay. I don't know much about it. But, and, you know, that was just more of a sign that they were, you know, they were kind of accepted by him and that he was kind of wink winking at them. So he was never going to do that because he's a narcissist and he that's how he got his support by pretty much playing both sides of the aisle because he also sucked up to a lot of uh, black people and he would have black people come to his hotel in the beginning just for the photo op, and it didn't reveal later, you know, he's actually, he's not moving on anything that's gonna help black people. He actually moved against them during the, uh, the BLM protest and whatnot. So this is just Trump being Trump. But um, let me go through the steps, I think, that, uh, that brought her to where uh, she ended up. I can understand her a little bit better, I think, than most people because she is a Southerner. I was raised in a pretty conservative family, and I had a lot of beliefs that were not my own. So that's the first thing um, that I noticed about this video, that she probably grew up in a very conservative family, was not super religious. She says she went to church once a week. I know some conservative people, Southern people, they go to church four times a week. They're always doing something with the church. She seems kind of passive about the church. And I think what happened is, yeah, she had these Christian beliefs and whatnot, but then Trump comes in office. Trump's a demagogue, so he appeals to the passions of people, and he tells them that everything is fake news except for Fox. And so that's all 
she would look at was Fox or whatever she saw on her Facebook feed or her TikTok or whatever. So she got in this bubble, although, you know, really CNN is probably the best thing to watch. CNN, uh, both sides, everything. So I don't understand how they got this reputation of conservative of being liberal. I mean, say what you want about MSNBC, but CNN isn't really that liberal. I mean, you, you got to remember Glenn Beck came from CNN, uh, Lou Dobbs, Nancy Grace, Megan McCain. They all worked at CNN. So CNN, I don't know. The fact that she wasn't watching these legitimate news sources, though, put her in this bubble. The pandemic hits in an election year. Got to remember that. So this QAnon stuff drops right after she loses her job. She's consumed in it. And really, if you look at her, you see how she's a little heavy. You know, what she could have done instead of getting on the internet every day when she lost her job was go out and exercise, which I I did uh, last summer because I was in kind of the same situation. I got hurt at work. We were furloughed for, uh, I think, a month or two, but I didn't go back, and I had all this time on my hands. I started to jog, and, you know, a few months later in the fall when I finally went to see my doctor, he was like, wow, do you, your labs are great. Whatever you've been doing, keep doing. So that's how I handled the, the pandemic. Now, I have gained a little bit of weight since then because I don't like to jog in the code, but you know, I'm going to get back to it come springtime, but that's one possible alternative thing she could have done to not get down this rabbit hole. But yeah, so she's this conservative woman who just got radicalized and radicalized until boom, she's obsessed with this thing. And one of the hooks they use in Q9 is to save the children uh, all the Democrats are pedophile angle. And the reason, now I read this article months ago that explained why conservatives and the right wing media focus on pedophilia. And it goes something like this. Back in the George Bush days, they were able to use homosexuals to scare people. But since then, it's kind of become a politically incorrect to pick on, on uh, homosexual people you know, they have the right to get married now. And that was the big thing back then. Um, gay people were getting married. They used that to scare people into voting for George Bush again. Well, that has diminished in return. So what do they do? They switch to the next thing because this country has always been scared of sex. You know, on to our Puritan background, we've just been obsessed with sex. We're scared of sex, but we secretly love sex because we like watch a lot of porn. So, the right wing media, the conservative media, focused on pedophilia because pedophilia is never going to be acceptable in our society. And because the homosexual angle was showing the diminishing returns they focused on save the children the democrats are pedophiles so a lot of people get hit into that and we are where we are there was another video there's a lot of videos coming about over these former QAnon people you know i really became all this woman in particular you may remember her she was in a target i think it was over the summer and she attacked a mass display well, she's all better now. I, I, I'm shocked that she's even the same person. I mean, she's so articulate in this video. Let me just go ahead and play it and we can discuss it. You know, I really became all consumed in the QAnon conspiracy theories because of a mix of fear, anxiety, depression, you know, uncertainty, inconsistency with the information coming out about the pandemic. I felt terrified. I was losing my business. I was watching people around me lose their business. I, I felt hopeless. I didn't know what to do. So I went to the internet. You know, it started innocently enough, you know, kind of 
poking around on spirituality and wellness and new age pages that, you know, are just things that I'm interested in anyway. And then, you know, as soon as the algorithm hooked me in, it, it really only took a matter of weeks until I was in this terrifying eco chamber that really, you know, completely changed the way that I think and the way that I processed information. And what people saw happen in my garage that day, I mean, truly with my husband, who's my absolute best friend, is an ultimate act of love and selfless service for another person because he had to make a very difficult choice that day, you know, to save my life. You know, he had given me an ultimatum, you know, it's this family, you know, or, QAnon and and you know because I had become so obsessed with it the save the children messaging spoke so deeply to who I am as a person and I just I just couldn't I couldn't put it aside it it ruined me and it really had a significant impact on my mental health and as you say I mean your husband tried everything to pull you out calling the police as we see there in that um, video of you in your garage that was one of his the the that was just one of the things that he tried. I mean, he really tried to pull you out. And as you say, the algorithm hooked you in. And so you got into this kind of pattern of doom scrolling and fear scrolling, and it just feeds on itself. And so what happened, Melissa? How did you break the spell? Well, you know, I had to make, you know, a very serious decision for my for my. Well, I won't play the rest of it. She basically got some mental health uh, help. And she's fine now, but she talked about the inconsistency of the COVID information. That was all Trump. The save the children thing, that, uh, again, that's a right wing tactic now. Uh, because like I said, the homosexual angle is not giving them the returns they used to, to give even you know, a lot of Republicans are saying, hey, gays are okay. And, you know, there's even gay Republicans now, so. Uh, they had to switch up their game, so to speak. So I don't know. I just, it was the perfect storm of circumstances that led to this. It was an election year, a pandemic, and we had this narcissist as president who was both siding all the conspiracy stuff and he was kind of promoting himself and lying about this pandemic because he just did not want to face the reality that people were dying on his watch. So you had all those circumstances, and it, like I said, it just it was this perfect storm of disinformation. And I don't think it's ever going to be repeated again. Hopefully, but it culminated in the Capitol riot, and then you know. As we saw today, Trump's second impeachment trial has started. So we will see what happens. And hopefully, hopefully, this will never happen again. I can only hope. I won't pray, but I can't hope. <laughs> well, thank you for stopping by.